Hi everybody, welcome to School of Scarlet. Today I have another message for you. So today's message is around heaven and hell. So I'm getting ready for Halloween, kind of decorating, doing all that stuff. And it came to me to make a video around heaven and hell. So that's our intuitive message for today. And my cat Sasha is walking around. I actually had her outside of the room, uh, but she wanted to come in. And like I've made a video before, she, she kind of knocked that door open and she's wanting to be in here. So if cats are significant to you, she's in here right now. You can probably hear her. I hope it's not too distracting, but that might be significant to y'all. Um, my husband's out of town and my cat is just going nuts trying to find him. Um, she is just a very loving cat, believe it or not. She hisses all the time and tries to attack. She's um, a shelter cat that we rescued and kind of rehabbed, but she is actually very loving and she's really searching for um, her dad right now. So she's kind of worried. So she's walking around. I'm hoping that she'll just lay down here um, on my feet and just kind of chill out for the video. But if she does meow, I think it's just going to be fitting for this video. So in um, what I wanted to talk about today is heaven and hell. So just kind of getting back to that, um, the way that I experience heaven and hell is not really like another physical destination. I experience it as that it's a consciousness that we can connect to right here and now. So you can either be in heaven or you can be in hell. So I want you to watch this video and then comment down below. Are you feeling like you're experiencing a level of reality where you're in heaven or where you're in hell? So comment down below when you get to the end of this video. So I experienced heaven on earth when I had my twin flame journey. And it's a journey of meeting essentially like your other part, your um, soulmate, some people call it, but it's truly a twin flame. And when I experienced this um, experience with my twin flame, it's like being in love. So imagine yourself if you've been in love before when you're in those early stages of love and you know, it seems like you just only want to be together and it doesn't matter what you do. You could be taking out the trash, but it feels amazing. It's like, that's the only place you want to be is with that other person that you love. So I experienced that with my twin flame. And when I experienced that, it was a very magical period of my life. And I wrote a book about it called Love, Death, Nothing. And I will link that in the description and in the comments down below. Um, it's a book about the twin flame journey. And it also really talks about what we will be talking about in this video. I'll also list the playlist because I've shared everything about that on this channel um, years back. So I will link that down below if you are not interested in that. But in the twin flame journey, you really get exposed to your other side, your shadow, and you get exposed to finding out that your twin flame is truly who you are. Your other part is truly just you. It's a sense of oneness. There's actually no separation between the two. And so I want you to imagine, you know, when you're out there in nature or like maybe you've had a very stressful day or something like that, but then you go out for a walk and you experience nature and all of a sudden it seems like all those problems that you had that day just melt away and you're just one with nature and all of a sudden you just take a look at the birds or you know whatever it happens to be the butterflies flying by or an interesting plant and it doesn't it, you know there seems to be no separation it's like you're just one with everything you're in this kind of calm state well that's heaven on earth that's essentially what it feels like um also for me sometimes i'll just go outside and play with my pets pets can oftentimes bring you into the state of being and it's like you're just kind of with them and you're playing with them you're having fun you get into this childlike nature and before you know it you don't feel separate from anything you're not worrying you're not up in your head thinking about all kinds of things your to-do list or whatnot you're one with that pet you're one with the animal playing fetch petting with it or you know whatever you happen to do with your pets so you're one with your pets you're one with what's happening in that moment and in that moment everything seems perfect does it not this can also happen being around children so you might be you know i was a teacher for many years and so working with children in different capacities um they can be quite funny and interesting and they ask so many questions and they really help bring you into the moment and when you're into the moment with them it really doesn't feel like there's anything other than you and that child you're like in the moment with them um they do something funny they ask you something funny and you're just one with them and it's all your worries everything that you were doing kind of melts away right so that's what this actually feels like and i experienced this with my twin flame but after that i had an experience of some people call it awakening enlightenment 
um, I call it more like a non-dual realization where everything became one and something was realized to me that there is really nothing happening here. But when that realization came through, there was a period of bliss. There was a period of really seeing everything as it truly was. The commentary in my mind really had subsided. I wasn't hearing, you know, all of the um, mental chatter that we have going through, you know, all of the thoughts and all of that kind of went away. And in that moment, I could experience life as it truly was without any filters, without any commentary opinions of the ego, the brain or whatever. So in that moment, I realized that everything here on earth is actually heaven. There is no separation here. It's just what we create in our own minds. And so when we create these commentaries, when we create these negative thoughts or we attach to them, that's when we experience a level of, let's say, hell. So the other thing that I experienced is like a sense of this is the Garden of Eden. And I talk about that in my book because it almost seems like you've walked into, you know, this reality and it's lush, it's um, healthy, it's flourishing. And your own actual reality may not have changed. Um, for me, nothing really had changed. I mean, I still lived in the same house. Um, I still had the same relationships. I still had the same job and things that I didn't necessarily love were still there in my reality, but there was no commentary about it anymore. It was just there. And it was just an experience of experiencing everything raw one-on-one -on -one with what was happening. So there was no thoughts of the future, of the past, of going into any kind of mental chatter or anything like that. So everything became one. And in those moments, I began to realize again that this is the Garden of Eden. Everything that I wanted and I have ever dreamed of is actually here and now in this moment. So I equate it to the Garden of Eden, like walking into a lush um, tropical paradise. And everything that you need is in that lush tropical paradise. Your favorite foods, um, your favorite people, everything. You just have to experience and explore this natural world of, let's say, the Garden of Eden. But everything seems safe. Everything seems like it's happening for you. It's animated. It's happening in a way that is supporting you. And you feel intuitively led to those things that bring you joy. And so it's an experience of total freedom an experience of total love, an experience of oneness with all that is happening in a way of truly trusting everything that's happening for you. Whether you thought it was good or bad, it's happening right now in this moment and it can't be changed. So what you do is just align to it and you don't have to do this, it just happens. But the other experience of this is when we're in hell, okay? In hell, I equate that to the desert. So a desert is very barren. You don't see anything lush growing. It seems all kind of dead, um, dry. There doesn't seem to be a lot of life there, right? So whereas in the Garden of Eden, you walk into it and you experience this feeling of there's life, there's growth, there's expansion, there's things happening. But when, when we're in hell, we don't experience that. We see everything as negative. We see everything as happening in a way that's bad, that's not good for us, that's gloomy, that's attacking us. There's conspiracies, there's um, agendas out to get us. And so we experience everything as kind of this closing down or this like, you know, this very limited sense of being, whereas the Garden of Eden, you walk into it, you feel abundant, you feel lush. And so it allows you to expand. So the experience of heaven is really a experience of expansion in all senses, in your creativity, in your mind, in your joy. And heaven um, really is that way. It truly is described that way, is it not? But hell is a experience of limitation, of constriction, of you know, very, very smallness. It feels like you're just being caved in and it's getting really small because you're not experiencing all that is. You're actually seeing it as dead. You're seeing things as separate, as coming against you. So when you're in hell, you see everything as a problem. You know, you watch a video and you get triggered by it and you write a negative comment. Um, you watch the news and you get triggered by it and you get very, very upset. You know, you go outside and it's too hot, it's too cold. Um, your dogs and cats are playing out there and it doesn't seem like you can connect with them. You see them as a bother, as pests. Um, or, you know, you have to see children and you see them as a problem. So it's an experience of separation where you're not connecting to those things that are there. So it's keeping you in a state of very separateness. And, and it, in turn, it makes you feel unhappy 
which kind of casts you out into what we call hell. So what are you experiencing right now? Are you experiencing heaven or hell? And so these experiences truly are experiences that we can shift right here and now, even right here in this moment. Doesn't matter what your past is, doesn't matter your circumstances, because you see, when you're in hell, it'll feel as if you um, are in this kind of like negative bad luck boat and that all of your circumstances have made you go to hell that your bad childhood made you go to hell that you know your lack of finances made you go to hell all of these things are making you be in hell but i'm going to tell you it has absolutely nothing to do with your circumstances you can be in heaven and be totally poor be homeless uh not have a relationship so many different things but when we are in hell it's essentially like a desert where there's nothing it's barren you're seeing everything is dry dead and deserted but you're there searching and searching and searching for that perfect thing and this is where we find a lot of seeking happening seeking for a spirituality seeking for the perfect relationship seeking for um having a family seeking for you know having that next beautiful house seeking for having that amazing car but you see once you get those things those things are not going to fulfill you they're not the things that create heaven they're not the things that truly are heaven they may help you to get into that frequency of heaven for a short time but if you haven't changed what you're aligning to within yourself you're going to end up back in hell shortly after you get that amazing car or that amazing marriage things are going to crumble and you're going to find yourself in hell once again so how do we stay in heaven? How to, do we align to heaven? Well, heaven is truly a place that we connect with in our own hearts. So when our hearts begin to open up, like in an awakening or in anything, like when we play with our pets, when we, when we play with our child, we have to stay in that. We have to abide in that and continuously be in our hearts, have that opening in our heart because our heart provides a space of total unconditional love where it sees things for what they are, not what we want them to be or what we think they should be. There's no resistance there. There's just love for what is. And God, spirit, whatever you want to call it, is in everything. So there is love everywhere, but you're just not seeing it because you're using maybe your head or your ego, whatever you want to call it, to discern whether this is good and this is bad. You're categorizing all day long what you think. Whereas if you connect to the heart, the heart doesn't do that. The heart just aligns to this present moment and sees things as just happening. Happening as they happen. They're not good or bad, they're just happening. And in the end, the heart gives you the intelligence of knowing that anything that happens in your reality is actually happening for you. So if you can look back on your life, a lot of times things did happen that we didn't particularly like or we didn't align to in the moment, but we look back now and we notice how actually those moments were there for a reason and everything that happens is divinely aligned. It's not outside of us or hurting us in some way. It's always helping us to communicate with ourselves and give us the information of where we want to be, what we want to do. So everything that's happening in your heart is truly loving. It's not actually harming you in any kind of way. So this message really is to help you to identify, are you in heaven? Are you in hell? And when you're in heaven, you're not resisting things. So, you know, oftentimes I've had people that early on when I was doing a lot more one-on-one -on -one sessions with people that were um, having non-dual glimpses or realizations, uh, most of them have never actually had a realization. I haven't really met anybody that has, but I've had quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one sessions with people that have had glimpses and things. And they're really scared to go the whole way, to align to their heart fully, because they feel that if they do so, that they'll lose their job, they'll lose their marriage, they'll lose their house. And I have countless emails where people are, are seriously asking, if I do this, will I lose my job? How will I support my family? If I do this, what will happen to this or that? So there's this fear, this attachment to things here on this earth. So there's this innate fear of really aligning to the heart, thinking that doing that, you're going to lose those things you're attached to. Those things that you're attached to are essentially like escape rooms. They're like your prisons. And I've talked about this in a couple videos back. They're the things that keep you in hell. You're going to be in hell as long as you're attached to these things. And that's why we hear, you know, Buddha and many other, you know, spiritual teachers have talked about that we should let go of our attachments. Why? 
because those attachments keep you in hell. And what God's going to ask of you, what spirit's going to ask of you, what your divine heart and your intuition is going to ask of you is total trust in this moment without you knowing what comes next, with you just taking the next step, the next step, the next step. If you do that, you will access the kingdom. The kingdom is the kingdom that's already within you. The kingdom within your heart that Jesus and so many others have talked about. It's here and now, but you have to align to that and you have to let go of those attachments. So we hear even in the Bible and things like that, stories where uh, countless stories of you know prophets and people in the Bible that they were tested by God, you know, to even kill their own child, to sacrifice their own child, or to believe things that, you know, were not believable at that time, or to leave their families, or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Intuition and your heart will test you to release those attachments. And if you're too attached, if you're more attached to those than you are to your own heart or God, then you're going to suffer and you're going to live in hell. So you have to align to your heart and take one step at a time, listening to the intuition of your heart, of your sacred heart, as you do this, you will be aligned to God and the kingdom that's already within you. And when you do this, you experience heaven on earth, and it is the most magical place that you can be. Now, does this mean that you're going to, you know, never uh, be unhappy or um, not have preferences? No, you're still going to have preferences. Things are still going to come up but you're going to be more and more aligned as you go on this process. Whereas if you continue to live in hell and cling on to the attachments and have fear about this or that or the other, while knowing that you want to try this, then you're going to continually find yourself in different escape rooms, different prisons that you're going to have to escape from over and over and over again. So it's going to be a perpetual cycle of misery, basically. So do you want to experience the Garden of Eden or do you want to experience a bar barren desert? So right here and now, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. I don't care what your circumstances are. You could have a disability. You could be poor. I do not care. Whatever it happens to be, you are currently in a state of being that has every option available to you, an infinite amount of uh, opportunities for you. There is everything here and now, just like the Garden of Eden felt for me. When I felt the Garden of Eden, it felt as if there was everything that I ever needed there. I just needed to go find it. It was just there somewhere. And my heart would lead me to it. It will lead me to it. I don't have to hardly do anything other than follow my joy and go along the path. And as I go along the path, kind of like a treasure map, uh, my heart will show me where those things are that are most aligned to me, to my heart. Whereas the other way, you don't have like your compass. You can see your heart as basically like an internal compass. If you align to your heart, you have a compass guiding you throughout that treasure map, throughout that Garden of Eden for whatever it is that you want in your heart. Whereas if you go the other route and you attach to fear, um, separation, and resistance, then basically what you've done is thrown away the compass and said, I'm going to go with my own little pea-sized mind and reject the intelligence of God, the intelligence of my heart, and go this other way. And if you do that, you've thrown the compass away and you've thrown the treasure map away and you're kind of lost. And that's why we find so many people seeking and seeking and seeking um, through religion, through spirituality, through psychology, through so many different things, through jobs, through relationships, through hobbies. And it's like an endless cycle of trying to find something, but it's never found because what you wanted this whole time was right here in your heart. This is the kingdom of heaven right here within your heart. So that's what this message is around about. Um, comment down below. Are you feeling like you're more aligned to heaven? Or are you feeling like you're more aligned to hell? Comment down below. And this is not a judgment. This is just a description for you. As heaven and hell are right here and now, what will you connect with? And in every moment, you can choose what you connect with. You may have been connected with hell this whole time, but right here and now, you can choose your heart and you can choose something different. You can go on that path. If you need any help connecting to your heart, aligning to that path, I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions. I offer a course called the Unconditional Course that we are beginning October 10th, and there are still spots available. So if you're interested in that, I will also link that down below in my description and in the comment pinned below. 
Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're new here, thank you so much for being here. I hope that you'll subscribe. I hope that you'll come back. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here, and I will catch you on the next message. I love you all.